Today I'll be doing a review for a laser engraver. Now, I did not know I needed or wanted a laser engraver until Longer reached out to me and asked me if I would do a review on their Ray 5 10 watts laser engraver. So that's what I'll be doing today. I should probably also mention that this morning when I looked at the Longer uh, website, their laser is in sale right now. It goes from $529 is in sale for $359. So quite a sale. If you do decide to purchase one, please do use uh, the link in the description below. It's an affiliate link. That means to no extra cost to you, I will get a small percentage and that will help the channel. Now, I'm not going to do the whole unboxing of this laser because there's really not much to it. It took about 20 minutes to put together. You snap in the four pieces for the frame. Then you put the sliding piece in the middle that holds the laser. You have four, three feet and then the four foot is the display. And then you have the belts that helps move the laser. And what else? The laser itself. So the whole assembly, like I said, it took about 20 minutes. There's not much to it. If you do not know how to put it together, um, the laser does come with a small uh, TF card and it has a full video on how to put it together. So that is very, very helpful. Now, before I give you a live demonstration on how this works and show you some of the things that I've tried and tested on over the last week, I'm just gonna give you a couple of little specs that you should know about this laser. Uh, one is a 10 watt laser, so plenty powerful for most jobs. It has a 3.5 inches touch screen display uh, the engraving surface is a 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter, and that is roughly 16 inches by 16 inches. Uh, what else? Let's see. Has fire protection and alarm. So that means if the laser detects an open fire, it will stop and it will sound an alarm. They also have move protection. That means if you accidentally bump your table or knocked over your table with your laser, the laser will stop. And that I can tell you it works because I accidentally bumped into my table a few times and it just stops. It does not pause, it stops. That means you have to start the project from the beginning. Uh, the laser focus point is 0 0.06 millimeters. So very, very small focus point. And this is important. Your focus point of the laser is your curve. So if you think about your table saw, if you have a blade that is a full curve blade, that's about one eighth of an inch. Well, the laser has a curve as well, but it's 0 0.06 millimeter. This is smaller than most lasers, more, most 10 watts laser on the market. And that just means you get more accurate focus, more detailed work. And also that means when you make an inlay, you do not need to offset your cut piece because with the glue, it will just cover that 0 0.6, 0 0.06 millimeter. So that means you don't need to offset your piece. It just fits perfectly and no need for offsetting. What else? On the package, you will get the TF card reader with a TF card. On the TF card, you will have a few test files, um, sheet with... Um, recommended settings for different kinds of materials, and also a full instruction video on how to put the laser together. You will also have a focusing uh, tube, and I'll show you how this works in a second. And of course, safety glasses. You should use your safety glasses every time you use your laser, and also you should never leave your laser unattended. Make sure you're by and kind of keep an eye on it. I've been working with this laser, like I said, over the last week. And, you know, I just let it work in the shop. I wear my safety glasses and I do other work around like organizing and such, kind of always keep an eye on it. What else? Let's see. I did purchase an air assist for my laser because if you have an air assist, you get less burning and cleaner cuts. You do not need it, it works fine without it, but I, from the reviews I was reading and stuff, everybody recommends you should have an air assist, so I did purchase one. Now, let's take a closer look of the things that I've been practicing things on and see what kind of things can you do with it. Like I said, I've never owned a laser before, so I can't compare it to other lasers, but, you know, I tested plenty for the last week. I think I can give you an honest review. 
So the first thing you can do is pretty much, you know, print the photo onto your wood. Now, printing is not the correct technology for it because really it just burns the photo into it. And I did a few tests here. Here is a photo that I did the speed, 5,040% power. And you can see it printed really nice, but it's kind of a little bit maybe dull, not so great. So then I took another test files and I went a little bit deeper. This one, I went 3,000 speed at 50%. As you can see, now it has a little bit more 3D shape. Now, that was good, but I was still not very happy with it. So then what I did, I took a piece of cherry, and this time I went 4,000 speed, but I increased the power to 60%. And now I got something like this. I hope this picks up on camera. The darker parts, they are a lot deeper, so it really gives it that 3D look. And I made this one is going to be a lid for a cherry box, but you see how cool that looks? I mean, that is a fantastic engraving of this laser. And it didn't take long at all. Then I thought, what if I take it even a little bit further and increase the power of the laser? So I did and made this engraving, and I think this is, I went a little bit too far. The blacks are a little bit burned, and this one, I was not so pleased with it. So I think the settings for the owl was much, much better and we got a lot more, you know, good result. So you can engrave like this, put pictures on your wood. And this is used a lot for engraving coasters, engraving your logo, engraving um, cutting boards, personalized cutting boards. Uh, a good money maker is engraving on glass, like for weddings, you can engrave on their champagne glasses and then people take them home and it has the bride and groom's name and the date of the wedding and so on. There's so much you can engrave. You can make dog tags, you can make bookmarks, you can make um, luggage tags because it engraves on leather as well. And business cards. Oh, I have an example here. I bought this um, aluminum coated business cards. They come in a pack like this. I'll leave a link in the description below. And I just engraved, um, you know, sawdust and splinter. I hope you can see that. Just really, really nice engraving. And how cool it is. You get a metal business card. So we saw the picture. What else can we do? You can buy files on Etsy or you can make your own. The files on Etsy, if you look for laser cut files, they're usually between one and five dollars and you can make cool little things like this. This is a little box. You will also make a cute uh, night light. You can put a tea candle on it. Of course, the fake one, not the real one. And you see everything just snaps in place. Very clean cuts and detailed work. And now I have this tiny box that it only took a couple of minutes to cut. And there it is. What else have I made with this laser? I made this other box. And this one, it's in the shape of a book. And I thought it was so clever. And when you open it, you see it's a box. And what I like about it is this life edge hinges. Now you can find plenty of files online about life edge hinges. There are all kinds of different designs and I think I'm going to use that on some projects. You see how flexible it makes this three millimeter plywood? This is really, really flexible. And now that is a hinge for this cool little box that I cut on the laser. So that was another project that I did. Now I found some other flexible kind of plywood things and I cut this one. I hope you can see the design on this one. Um, something happened here in the middle, it did not cut through, and I think it's because my plywood was bowed, so the laser couldn't focus in there. But look how flexible this is. This is just plywood. I mean, that is so cool. So I did that. What else I did? Oh, here are the leaves that it got cut off from the box. The, it was the box... Uh, the cut, I hope it focuses. I think I have to get out of the frame to focus. Let's see. So very small and detailed. So there you go. That was that. What else I've tried? I've cut a panel 
I am planning on putting this one. This is cut of walnut, three millimeter walnut. And this panel, I plan on putting it into a picture frame. And this will be a top of a box. And you can get all kinds of designs online for these kind of panels. So I made that. Then I've got a lady here holding a maple leaf. So I thought that was cool. I was going to do this one into an inlay, but then this lower part, it seems a little bit thin and I, don't, I didn't know if that would work. I didn't try it yet, but I cut the lady part first. I also have this deer on top of what it looks like a field or something. And this one, I was going to place it in, inside of this pocket that I made with the engraver. And this pocket is three millimeter deep. Let me show you. You see, maybe if I put this in here, you can see the depth. So three millimeter deep pocket for this deer to fit into it. What else did I do? Here I made a deeper pocket. This is 4.6 millimeter. So you can see here how deep this pocket is. Let's see, how can I show you? I hope you can see this. But I made this um, leaf from the paduk and this is going to get inlaid onto this piece of cherry. So you can see it will just fit right in. Now my paduk, it's only three millimeter and this I went too far is 4.6. So if I drop this in, I will have a lot of sanding to do. So I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna lightly tap it in. It's a little bit tight, but you get the idea. You can do some really cool inlays like this. Now I did another inlay here on this piece of walnut. And for this one, the pocket, I made it very shallow, about one and a half millimeters. So it went a lot faster. And then I used a veneer to do this leaf. Veneers, I buy them on Amazon. I have tons of packets of this. I will show you. And I'm going to leave a link in the description below. If you want to get something like this, uh, it just comes in packets like this, thin veneer, very nice for doing inlays and very easy to use. I also have this cutting board here. This one came free with some gift from a relative that was like one of those uh, cheese and crackers and salamis kind of gift. So, but I took the cutting board and sent it down and I'm going to do an inlay of this butterfly. So I think that's just gonna make it really, really nice. Once I'm going to inlay this colorful butterfly onto this cutting board. So that's another thing you could be doing. Now, when you make a pocket like this for your inlays, you don't necessarily have to fill it with wood. You can put paint and then send it down and your paint will be stuck into the pocket. You can fill it with colored epoxy and, you know, just sky's the limit. Think about all the possibilities. Now, before we get to the live demonstration of the laser and the program, uh, I want to mention that there's three ways to send your file to your laser. And one of them is uh, using this TF card that they provided. You can put your design on this and then just plug it into your um, display. And that's one way to get your design to your laser. The laser engraver also works over Wi-Fi. So you can just send your design to your laser engraver and you do not have to have a computer in the shop or an the way I use it, I just plug in my laptop and I just find it easy and it works really, really great. Now, in order to use this laser, you need to download an app called Lightburn. But before I do that, hold on just a second. Let me record my screen just so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. And I can share this with you. All right, so the app we're using, it's Lightburn. Lightburn, this program costs $60 and it's a one-time payment, then it's yours to use. And this is what it looks like. Let me make sure I'm still recording, yes. To import an image, you will go to Files and Import. And then if you have a PNG image, you can click on it and open. 
And there's our PNG because it's a PNG, it has no background, and we are ready to cut or engrave. Now, if you do not have a PNG image, you can also import a JPEG. And I'm going to import this JPEG that I just uh, screenshot and downloaded from um, Google Images. So here's my image. It's a black star on a white background. And Lightburn has a really cool function. If you really, if you click on it, right click on it, you can go to trace image and you see this red line. We are tracing this star. And then if I click OK, now we trace to the star and I can drag out the image and delete it. And now we have a star. Now, if you look at this, this is just cutting it and it cuts the outside of the star. And you can see it in the preview. This is what it cuts. And it cuts pretty uh, fast. This is 2 minutes and 24 seconds for the 6 inch. Click OK. If we want to cut this into a pocket for an inlay or we just want to like burn it as a picture, then we need to change this from line to fill. And now when you go to preview, you will see it's filled in. Now here is your settings. Right now I have it set for, uh, let's go to line. I have it for 250 uh, speed and 100% power. If you double click on your layer, you can change your parameters over here, the speed and the power. And then the mode is your line or fill. And this is how you will put your settings on. I'm just going to cut this star. Let's see. You also have your controls here for framing, pause, stop, start, and so on. Very, very simple program to use. The one thing I did and I recommend you do too, I went into edit and device settings. And right here, I, um, I enabled the laser fire button and I also enabled laser on when framing. And this comes very, very handy and I will show you this will let us see exactly where the laser will cut and the, that way we can frame our things very, um, you know, precise. So I'm just going to put this three millimeter plywood there and I'm going to make this smaller just so it can go faster. I'm going to move it over here to the center. You can manually move your laser kind of where you want it to start. And let's see, we need to focus it. I'm going to use my focusing um, black. I'm going to move the camera so you can see how to focus. So there's two screws here to the front. I'm going to loosen those and you see my laser goes up and down now. And then I'll put this focusing block over here and now it's resting on it and I can tighten the buttons and remove the focusing block. And now our laser is focused for this thickness of material. My material is not flat, which is not ideal, but I think it's going to work. I'm going to connect my laser to my computer so they can talk to each other. And let's see, I'm going to turn on the laser. It's going to be a little bit noisier, but I'm not going to talk too much during this process. I want you to look carefully when I frame it. You will see exactly where the laser will be and I will cut out that star. So let's do that right now. Now, as you can see, our cut is very, very clean. No burning marks at all. I got to get out of the frame so it focuses. Zero burn marks and very, very clean cut. And it was really fast and easy. Now, another really cool thing about the longer Ray 5 10 watts laser engraver is that it's upgradable. That means if you buy the 10 watts and then later on you decide you want it a little bit more power, you can always upgrade to a 20 watt. And you don't have to buy the whole thing again. You just buy a new laser head that have a 20 watt one and it will work with your frame and everything else. 